The remote Fisherfield Forest in the Northwest Highlands is often regarded as Scotland's last wilderness. Join me on this adventure and I'll show you exactly why. Nice parking. Not. It's half twelve, folks. I've just left the village of Pilyu, heading in to the last wilderness of Scotland, aka Fisherfield Forest. This should be a good one. All right, troops. That took just under an hour to reach Kernsey. But to be honest with you guys, I really should have took my bike with me if I was a bit better organised. The little folding e-bike that I've got would have zoomed in here no problem. But hey ho, it is what it is. That's Ben Ari Har there coming into view. Me and Kevin camped here a few years ago. Don't get me wrong, the uh, forest track is good in places, but there's a few boggy sections as well. Right folks, I'm probably showing my age using this old Carlsberg advert but if Carlsberg did mountain approaches it'd be this. This is stunning, honestly. It's just teasing me now. So straight ahead, that takes you to Loch Marie. You want to swing to the left fork here and continue on. I'm getting tantalisingly closer now, folks. Won't be long till I reach this causeway. We are here. It is the causeway, which is the right of passage into Fisherfield. And it just gets a little bit more remote once you get over the causeway. Well, the causeway was built during the Second World War to stop the German U-boats coming up and the commanders bagging their favourite Monroe. But seriously though, it's a fantastic causeway, I really like it. Just something quite nice about it when you get over the other side. This here is Carmo Shooting Lodge. You can hire that out, it costs silly money. A couple of my friends have done it. It was over a thousand pounds anyway for the weekend. Uh, no electricity, just gas lamps. Here you've got the Walker's Buffet. It's a bit rough and ready, but you would take it in a storm. So yes, it took me three hours and a half to get to the causeway. That includes a little bit of filming, so I probably could have done it in three hours flat. But uh, we're going to have to press on because I keep forgetting with the nice sunshine that it's not the middle of June and it's not getting dark at the back of 10. Sunset's at half seven. So I've got about three hours and a half to get to the summit. And uh, according to Walk Highlands, I'm only like halfway there in time. So I'm going to get my march on. It's seriously remote in here, by the way. It's like, wow, I forgot how good it is in here. So we've got. Roo stack more and a vagin behind me there. If you continue on that path that was on there, you'll eventually get yourself to Cheneval Boffey. Well, you've got that bog to cross first, right enough. But yeah, just in at the back of 
and Chalik, where uh, me, Kevin, Stevie were about three, four weeks ago. If you follow the plateau down, well, hopefully you can see this little knobbly ridge just here. I'm pretty sure that the Ordnance Survey confirmed that the most remote spot in the British Isles, or Britain at least, is in there. Uh, I don't know the exact GR, I did have it written down but I've since got a new computer, uh, so I don't know if I've lost it or if I've moved my notes across. But yeah, this just sort of gives you an idea how remote these mountains actually are. Quarter to seven, that's the tent pitched. Happy days, I can relax now. Yes. The 100th wild camp, by the way. Not prolific, but still decent. It's uh, ten past nine. I'm currently contemplating going to sleep, but I'm trying to hold off a little bit. So there's nothing worse when you go to sleep too early. You wake up at two, three in the morning, and you're like, I can't get back to sleep, and then you just watch the hours going, hour by hour. So uh, yeah, I don't think I'll do any more recording tonight. I'll catch you guys in the morning. Cheers. Good morning, campers. It is uh, just gone six o'clock. Uh, sunrise at just after seven so i'm going to start packing up now uh otherwise it was a good sleep uh temperatures eight degrees celsius so not that cold really uh aye let's get packed up let's have a look outside <laughs> What a stunning morning, absolutely superb boss. So silent though, I can barely hear a pin drop. So it's 20 past 8 folks, I've finally quit the summit a bit later than I wanted but it's just been such a nice morning that it was just a slow pack up, you know what it's like, you're enjoying it, what's the rush? Oh, ptarmigan, there we go, there it is, yeah. absolutely beautiful You know, I sometimes feel a bit awkward talking about Scottish wilderness because when it comes down to brass tacks we probably really don't have wilderness per se 
but this area is probably about as close as you could get to wilderness plus maybe two other areas in Scotland the Cairn Gorms, close second and then probably sort of like Glen Affric, the Mallardock round in behind uh, Glen Shiel but otherwise, uh, yeah, it doesn't get much more remote than this and I think this is deserving of its wilderness title So I just came round the corner there they've just been greeted with the views of Fionn Loch and Loch Dhu Look at that Sea biscuit there was going to come over towards me. Anyways, what we're doing, quick detour down to the buffet, see what it's looking like these days. Yeah, just what I remember it to be like. Pretty grim. Those mattresses must be loping. Yuck. Just approaching the Cosby folks. 